Patrick, on the Kickstarter page for In Pursuit of Silence, you have a quote from a French-German artist. Is it Hans Jean Arp? That's right, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, the quote is beautiful. It's a very long quote. Yeah. Um, what, what, where did you look for this, or how did you come up with this? I think when I was putting together the business plan for In Pursuit of Silence that uh, we're passing around to investors, I knew that I wanted to kind of um, sort of set the stage for investors with a quote and so I just scoured the web to find that um, and then I you know you always have to research who's actually saying it to make sure it's a credible person and uh, not a serial killer or something you know and so Gene Arp turns out to be this incredible artist you know he was one of the the founding members of the Dada artist movement back in the early 1900s and it was just like it was so good and so perfect as far as how I wanted to kind of sum up and set the stage for this documentary Interesting. Yeah. Have you thought of who your audience will be for the film? Have I thought about who the audience will be for the film? Um, yeah, I've, I've definitely given some thought to the audience. Um, you know, every anybody living in a major city, I think, will be intrigued by this topic. Um, people who live amidst noise every day of their lives uh, will be interested in this film. Aside from that, there's these niche markets, of course. There's a lot of noise activists in the world and noise organizations and um, people who deal in sound design and acoustic design. So all those sort of pockets of people we're hoping to, to tap into and, and share the film with. And have you done this in the past where you've written an outline of how it will go? I mean, I don't... The probably, film itself? Right, right. Do you have a specific plan? That's a good question. Mm -hmm. um, this, I'm, I'm still developing the idea, but as I develop it, yeah, I'm sort of putting this mental outline together. And at some point, I do plan on, on, on mapping out the entire film as much as possible. Uh, I wasn't able to do that with the last film, La Seuss, because it was just kind of, it was a narrative about one guy, and we we're following his story, and there's just no outline whatsoever that we could even put together. Um, but with this kind of film, I feel like, yeah, I can sort of, I can figure out what the direction will be as far as the content, like how I want the narrative to kind of unfold. Um, and how I want the conversation to unfold. So yeah, there's definitely some more prep that I can do on this film. Yeah. And will you be doing a lot of interviews with people, or will it just be studies and your beautiful uh, cinematography? Yeah, the, the film will be comprised of uh, what we typically see in documentaries, uh, in part. Uh, you'll see some interviews with people, and you'll follow, we'll follow the narrative of some individuals, uh, possibly a deaf person, uh, probably a monk, um, people like that. Um, and then we'll intercut that with experts speaking about certain studies that have been conducted over the years. But what I'm most excited about the film is that I'm trying to mix in um, kind of the experimental tradition of filmmaking into this film a little bit. It's going to be kind of a hybrid documentary experimental film where I really want this film to be um, very much uh, of something rather than about something. I don't want people leaving the theater just hearing about noise and, and silence and hearing people talk about it, but I want them to really experience what that feels like. I want to juxtapose noisy segments and scenes with silent scenes, and I want them to know what it feels like to experience silence. And I want it to be sort of a restorative kind of experience for people too. At the end of the, watching this film, I want them to, to kind of like have a sense of relief almost and this desire to seek out more silence in their lives.